Hey everybody, it's Zealand and uh, I'm back. I'm doing things. And right now the thing I'm doing is Dark Samorg. It is a deck. If you click this video, you're probably wondering why I'm messing with it, why it exists, what's actually going on. Um, and we're here to find out basically for yourself if Dark Samorgs are for the birds or if these wing beasts will uh, bring the heat. And in my opinion, they're good. And I will show you why. Um, it's basically a deck profile, but I'm not going to read word for word. I'm just going to tell you what they do basically and then go over some general strategies. So... Here are all your little birds. Three, uh, what's this called? Beginning. Uh, three bird of bringing. Three bird of calamity. And, uh, that's basically it. Um, they all have the effect if your opponent doesn't have any spells or traps in their spawn trap zone. You can special summon them from the graveyard once per turn, and then they are banished when they leave the field. This one, when normal summoned, gives you an additional normal summon, even if it leaves the field. This one... Uh, searches for any s'more card, which is the best one. And this one sends a s'more card from your deck to your grave, which is a little situational, but it can be applicable. And it's another winged beast, so you can do things. There are levels 1, 2, and 3, respectively. So you can do some cheeky XYZ plays, but most of the time you won't be going into the extra deck at all. So you've got 9 of these bad boys. You want to see at least one of them in your hand, you definitely want to see this one. And if you don't wind up with the field spell, you want to see this one. So that's pretty good. Um, here we go with the big burbs. Uh, Lord of the Storm is the best one. Uh, you run three of these, and that's because you can tribute summon it. If it's tribute summon, then it can't be targeted by spell or trap card effects, which is pretty busted. It's basically Darkest Diablos, but by itself. And if a spell or trap card effect is activated, you can tribute a winged beast monster, target a card on the field, and shuffle it into the deck. So it's really good removal. And it's there to stay, which is really good. And if you bring back all the little burbs, you can just tribute them off and then shuffle cards back into the deck instead of destroying them or returning them to hand like the spells or traps. It's really good. Uh, Non-negotiable. Run at three. And then some work of darkness. You definitely run three of these. I've seen people that uh, I've watched videos, they go from three to two to three to two. I say three no matter what, because if you're not normal summoning a big boy, you are losing the game. If you lose advantage, you are losing the game. You have to be ahead and stay ahead to win with this deck. But it shouldn't be hard because you're normal summoning. A lot of the hand traps and uh, anti-meta cards that are happening, like, you know, Monarchs Erupt or Phantasma, they're not going to affect you as hard as they would. Other decks that are reliant on summoning small boys and then going into the extra deck, you're just, we're just vanilla. We're normal summoning little boys to make big boys. That's all it is. This is a dark meat, this is a white meat, they go together. But what this card actually does is when you tribute summon a dark or wind monster, you can special summon it from your hand if uh, it wasn't there originally, so from your hand, or from your grave if it was there originally when the monster was tribute summoned. So that's really good. Um, also, if a spell trap card or effect is activated, you can tribute a winged beast monster, including itself, and uh, negate and destroy it. So these two go hand in hand. Basically, the idea is you make a little guy, you tribute summon this, special summon this, and then bring out your little dudes, and then you have a lot going on. One of them is untargetable. It's pretty neat. Um, Synergy. I play two Apex Avian. Uh, mid to late game, being able to just negate a card and still have a winged beast in your hand, you can tribute summon next turn, is really, really good. It's also huge, and it's level 7, which comes up because these are level 8. Um, unless you reduce their number of tributes with the field spell, it's not often you're going to be able to summon them with just one tribute. But these, I'll get to later with the spells and their grave effects. But this is level 7, and that's very important because you can just tribute summon it uh, with even less tributes than you think. So we'll come back to that later. And then we are playing Dark Samorg, so we are playing one Dark Samorg. I have tested a lot without Dark Samorg in general because you almost always would rather normal summon Lord of the Storm just because it's untargetable and you can use spells and traps to negate things, but uh, don't even worry about it for the grave. So it's definitely for emergencies, but if you know what you're playing, you can easily side this card out or even just go for this first turn, especially if you're playing a trap deck that doesn't really do anything but set cards, and uh, it's very good. So, 2 Ash. 
Um, three ashes of brick in this deck. If you see multiples of anything, it's pretty lame. So two ash for interaction with your opponent, but most of the time, ash is only pivotal if they're using a monster effect that uh, brings things out. And, um, or if they use extravagance and they're trying to gain advantage on you, you just say ash to that, it's one for one, and then you're both even again. But you only need two, because it's not a winged beast, and it doesn't do anything else. So, that, that's my policy on ash there. Um, I did test no ash at all, but having interaction and keeping the playing field equal so you can gain advantage on your turn is very important. So, right now, I'm running it at two. Um, these are ghost ogres. Um, I haven't actually tested these, but these are originally DD Crows, and that's why I'm suggesting you use, because it's a wing beast, and you can use it to discard and activate your spells, and you can use it to, you know, it's dark. And it's very important to hit cards on summon, and banish Orcus cards from grave, banish Engage from the grave, banish Ray from the grave. You know, DD Crow is just generically good. But uh, I will test this and get back to you on basically if Ghost Ogre is good or not. Um... But no, DD Crow is the card. This is just better than looking at the back of a Yu-Gi-Oh card and saying I don't have it, basically. Um, those are it for the monsters, the little ones and the big ones. Um, here are the spells. Three of this. This is very important. You can discard a Winged Beast monster, any Winged Beast monster, and then add two Samorg monsters with different attributes. So a Dark and a Win, respectively. It can be a little one, it can be a big one. But most of the time, you're searching Lord of Darkness, the Big Black Bird, level 8, and then either the small yellow one to search for a Samorg spell, or trap, or monster. Um, we don't run the trap, by the way. That card's bad. Uh, <laughs> shout out to pet traps. Um, and uh, when it's in the graveyard, just like the other Samorg spells or traps, you can banish it, reveal a uh, winged beast in your hand, and then it goes down by one level. So, uh, in conjunction, you have this card, it's at 2, you run this instead of MST or Twin Twister, because you can discard a Winged Beast, return all Spells and Traps from the Spell and Trap Zones to their hand. Not the Field Spell, but the Fells and Spell and Trap Zones, which is very important, because it makes all these little dudes alive when you want to Special Summon them from the Grave, and removes any threats that would stop you from Normal Summoning or Special Summoning monsters. It's very important. Uh, why would you run this over the other things? Because it gets rid of everything at once, at the cost of a Winged Beast. And if it's in the grave, just like um, Onslaught, you can banish it and then reduce the level by one of a Winged Beast. So let's say you have Apex Avian and you have two of these in grave. After using them both, you can banish this and the level seven Winged Beast becomes level five. And then you can only use one tribute or you can use the field spell to make it one less tribute, which is zero tributes and you normal summon it for free. Um, the field spell is by far the most complicated card, but it's also the most important to have. However, it's not so important that you need to run Terraforming, because if you see multiples of this card, it's super duper dead. Um, so basically, it has a side eff effect of giving all Winged Beasts 300 attack and defense, and you can reveal a level uh, 5 or higher Wind Winged Beast to reduce the number of tributes required for a tribute summon of a Winged Beast monster by 1. And also, you can activate the effect to normal summon again. Basically, it's really good. The standard combo is reveal uh, Lord of the Storm since it's a level five or higher wind, and then you just normal summon it for one less, and then special this. It's pretty standard, standard combo. But it's still really good. Um, and then the 300 attack and defense makes it bigger than other boss monsters, so it's less likely to get ran over and less likely to get you know bopped by dumb things, even though it has other effects. You still run three because we're playing desires in this build. Spoilers, but um. You don't want a brick on it. It can be a brick. And this deck is all about... So, Call by the Grave is very important because if you activate a spell that searches, you're saying, okay, activate this card like Onslaught, and then you discard a Winged Beast. That's minus two, and then you search and then replace those. But if that doesn't go through, that sucks. So all your spells are live. Um, Pot of Desires, live. They can't ash it, and they can't impermanent it because it's a spell. So you want to make sure key points like that go through. Um, and this makes it to where you don't have to bait and waste resources or anything. Um, Pot of Desires, you run this at 3 because if it's in your hand, you can plus 1, and you're about maintaining advantage and gaining advantage, so your normal summons don't go to waste, and you can continue to stay ahead of your opponent, because if you drop behind, you're probably losing. Just a good card. Um, why am I not running Extravagance other than money? Because, um, you see, I like to draw cards, and... This is just a straight-up draw, and banishing doesn't really affect it, because, again, we run everything at 3. 
Um, but also, uh, we're getting a Link monster. We, us Samorg bird boys, are getting a Link monster, and we don't want that banished. Also, we run Super Poly in this build, and we want all of our targets to be live, because this deck is almost... It's terrible at breaking big boards. Like, big boards like Pendulum, big boards like Orcus, big boards, you know, stuff like that. Infernoid. So, we don't want to banish our targets. We want to use our desires to draw. Um, and speaking of, two Super Poly. Three is a brick, because you are going to run into matchups like Sky Striker or Grand Maju, where you're not going to be able to Super Poly everything. And so, this is an easy side out. But when it works, it's so good, it's worth maining and breaking boards. Um, and then three of the chicken bird sauce that, uh, zesty buffalo, uh, for our wings. All right, enough. But basically, this is a harpy card. It says if you control a wind wing beast monster, all of your opponent's activated effects are negated for the rest of the turn. Uh, as far as monsters go. So even if you do brick and you end your board on this in a set card, activate this during the standby, they can't really do anything. And this is like half the reason to even bother playing this deck because it's so, it just shuts off their turn. And since you're summoning big monsters, you can OTK the next game. I'm uh, considering running Trap Trick, but the fact that you have Desires and just three of these, like it, it's worth seeing mid to late game, but mostly just going first. So you're ahead of your opponent. And then if they can't do anything, you have advantage because you're playing cards and they're not. You basically went first twice. It's it's nuts though, and it's a normal trap. So why not? Using it from your hand is irrelevant because if you wanted to play birds, why would you play harpies? You should just play actual big birds. <laughs> Superior bird deck. Uh, there you go.